I'm Gary Jacques, and I'm currently the Global Program Director for Hope Worldwide. Before that, I was an evangelist, and before that, I was uh, a physician. I grew up in rural Colorado in a loving family with five children. I wasn't really exposed to the poor, and I wasn't really biased one way or the other. As a physician, I began to treat uh, patients from the inner city, people that by American standards were quite poor. And my compassion grew somewhat. As an evangelist, uh, it grew even more. But I still wasn't really where God wanted me to be. My understanding of the gospel message was somewhat limited and restricted. I viewed it as the good news. Jesus died on a cross so that we could be saved, have a right relationship with him, be forgiven, go to heaven. That was kind of the gospel message to me. It really wasn't until I moved to Cambodia in 2002 along with my family to serve first as a doctor and then as the hospital director for a charity hospital there that my heart became more tender to, to the condition of the needy. Cambodia is one of the poorest countries in, uh, in Asia, and it wasn't hard to find people that were truly desperate, truly needy, through no fault of their own, uh, just, just fighting and clinging for their very survival. I just uh, remember the desperate father I met one time. He had made the painful decision that he was going to quit buying insulin for his diabetic daughter, knowing full well she would die. But the insulin cost $30 a month, and that was all he had to live on. It was all he had to put rice on the table for his other five children. He had already lost his wife. She died a few years back with an illness. He had sold his plot of ground, his rice paddy, his means of earning a livelihood. He sold that to try to provide care for his wife, to pay for the medical bills. But the care was ineffective, she died anyway, and now he was penniless and without any means of earning a living. And so he was faced, do I put rice on the table for these, the rest of my family or do I buy this medicine for the one daughter? And I thought as a parent, man, how can you, you know, how can you make that kind of a decision? Fortunately, that story has a, a good ending. He discovered our hospital where the care is free and uh, the insulin was free and uh, he didn't have to make that terrible, terrible choice of which child should I, uh, ch should I save. They, as much as anything, I think these people appreciate that you know, somebody cares about them and somebody feels like, uh, you know, they have worth and dignity and value. And, and they, don't, they don't get that in their lives. Now that I've uh, been doing what I've done with the poor, I realized that from the very beginning of his ministry, he preached, quote, the gospel. He was preaching the good news and it occurred to me, I don't think what he's preaching is that I'm gonna to go to the cross for you in three years and die. No, he preached a more holistic, a more complete good news. And I believe that the salvation message and the compassionate message of Jesus Christ can't be separated. They can't be pitted against each other. One in the right hand and one in the left hand. Which is more important? Which one has eternal consequences? Which one should we focus on? They have to both be there hand in hand. If Jesus cried when Mary and Martha cried, Lazarus was dead, and Jesus knew it was temporary. He knew this had no eternal significance. This had nothing to do 
with Lazarus' salvation, or with Mary's, or with Martha's. They were feeling pain in the moment, and Jesus felt pain with them, and he cried with them. How much more does he weep? How much more does he weep now for the billions of people that are in pain on this planet through no fault of their own, due to the poverty, due to the circumstances, due to the hand you know, that life has dealt them? And if he weeps, we should weep. And if he did something, we need to do something. Jesus said, go and learn what it means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Some things are only acquired in the going and the doing and the experiencing. And I think compassion for the poor is one of those. As a worldwide brotherhood, let's, uh, let's unite together. Let's fast, let's pray, let's lift our hands up. And let's, uh, let's remember the poor.